welcome again in the session of vibration of multi degree of freedom system uh, we were studying the model analysis and in our first part we have considered a problem of three masses connected with the three springs and uh, for this system we have developed the governing equation of motion and then we converted these equations into a matrix form then we developed the eigen value problem and by solving the eigen value problem we have calculated three natural frequencies of the system and by using the three natural frequencies we have calculated the three natural modes or normal modes u1 u2 and u3 we have uh, merged three normal modes in a single matrix and that matrix is known as the model matrix in this session we will understand and we will learn one of the important property of this normal mode that is known as the orthogonal property the normal modes are said to be orthogonal when they follow uh, this uh, kind of uh, condition uh, this condition indicate that if i will multiply the transpose of one of the normal mode with the mass matrix and then again i will multiply this quantity with a normal mode i will get my answer zero or non zero depending on my choice if my i is not equal to j i will get a zero value but if it is i equal to j i will get a non zero value for example if i will multiply the first mode transpose of the first mode with the mass matrix and again the first mode in this fashion i will get a value 26.49 on the other hand if i will multiply the first transpose of the first mode with the second mode i will get a zero value so this property says that the normal modes are orthogonal the same logic is applicable for the stiffness matrix if i will use two normal modes i will multiply two normal modes with the stiffness matrix i may get either zero or non zero value depending on the choice of my normal modes if i is equal to j i will get a non zero value if i is not equal to j i will get a zero value so i can say that my normal modes are orthogonal with respect to both mass and stiffness matrix now if i am using the same normal mode i am getting one value that is 26.49 what it is so i have considered that this is my generalized mass and i noted this generalized mass by m11 so now if i am interested to calculate the generalized mass corresponding to each normal mode i can use these equations to calculate the three generalized mass and i am noting the three generalized mass as m11 22 and 33 similarly if i am interested to calculate the three generalized stiffness i can use three normal modes to calculate the three generalized stiffness in the present case i am calculating as my first generalized mass 26.49 then the second one is 5.71 and 8.29 similarly my generalized stiffnesses are 14.06 14.66 and 36.519 so now let's take a pause and try to understand what is the significance of this generalized mass and generalized stiffness so uh, let me explain you that earlier i was having a system with real system with three masses connected with the three springs m1 m2 and m3 k1 k2 and k3 i have calculated three natural frequencies for this system by solving the eigen value problems now what i have done i have considered a virtual space and in the virtual spaces i am having three single degree of freedom system consist of three generalized mass and three generalized stiffness the purpose of doing this transformation is basically we require this transformation to develop the model analysis uh, formulation and the beauty of this transformation is that if i will calculate the natural frequency of this generalized system i will get the same value as i have calculated in my previous uh, system for the real life system similarly for the second system i will get the second natural frequency and for the third system i will get the third natural frequency so after calculating the generalized mass i can ortho normalize my normal modes either by the mass matrix or the stiffness matrix but i am going to use the mass matrix to normalize my uh, normal modes so when 
I will multiply the normal mode by the square root of the generalized mass. I will get the orthonormal first mode. Similarly, I can calculate the second orthonormal mode by dividing the second normal mode by the second generalized mass and third generalized mass by uh, to calculate the third uh, third normal mode in terms of orthonormal orthonormal condition so now why i am multiplying it by under root or square root it is my choice because the philosophy what i want to follow is that if i will use uh, the normal mode again to the mass matrix i should get a unity value and that is possible if i will use this philosophy and therefore I am dividing the normal mode with the square root of generalized mass to calculating my uh, orthonormal mode for example in the case of first orthonormal mode fourth uh, orthonormal mode I am having my normal mode 1 2.469 and 3.361 which I have calculated by solving the eigenvalue problem I have divided this by the 20 and square root of 26.49 which is nothing but my first normal mode first generalized mass I'm sorry so in that fashion I have calculated the three orthonormal mode uh, as uh, 0 0.1943 0 0.47 0 0.56 and, and so on so uh, let me repeat again that if I will multiply this orthonormalized ma uh, mat uh, normal mode with the mass matrix I will get a unity value you can see here if I will multiply these three equation uh, vectors I will get a single value similarly if I will multiply the second normal mode with the mass matrix I will get uh, again I'll get the unity value so if I will rearrange these three orthonormalized mode into a single matrix I can tell that this new matrix is my orthonormal model matrix and the property of orthonormal matrix is that if I will multiply the orthonormal matrix with the mass matrix I will get an identity matrix which is nothing but the 1 1 1 similarly when I will apply the orthonormal mode with the stiffness matrix I will get a matrix which is having the three natural frequencies in the diagonal one diagonal matrix representing the three natural frequencies